Yeah, so after, um, after writing Kitty J, that, that sort of signature song of mine, um, I, uh, I started to explore even more playing the fiddle and singing and um, keeping rhythm with my foot, the stomp box, which I, uh, I created. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's become something that which, which people have really got into live. You know, obviously it's quite a, an unusual thing to, to see. I saw it an awful lot when I was growing up with people like Tom McConville and Roger Wilson. Um, but not as much rhythm as, as obviously I added to it because um, uh, obviously it's quite frantic um, when I'm, I'm performing that. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of style, the way that evolved with other musicians and the way it built out, um, I was working an awful lot with a fantastic double bass player called Ben Nichols. And actually, myself and him were, um, were trying to build up our own trio. We were looking at lots of other singers and we were working with Benji Kirkpatrick then as well. He was a fantastic, um, I still work with him now, I still work with both of them actually, but they were, um, they were there in the early days, um, right, from the, uh, right, from the, right from the start um, when um, Kitty J became successful. And then my brother Sean, who was, um, who was still working with Equation, but d decided that um, there were some, some good gigs that we were doing as well. So uh, we had a, a great opportunity to go out as, as a three piece. Um, and then uh, I was lucky enough to find a guy called Cormac Byrne who's a fantastic barn player and cajon player who, who uh, he kind of came into the sound at Freedom Fields, which is the second record, um, or the third record I did, but, um, uh, and he really helped that sound. I mean, he really developed the, uh, the rhythm elements and percussion elements there. And then um, on Poor Man's Heaven, we added a kit player, a drummer. So it kind of grew naturally, um, and it became even heavier um, uh, it's a real driving sound of Poor Man's Heaven. Um, and then this next record, again, we've actually changed the drummer again because unfortunately the drummer we, who worked with us for two years, Andy Tween, um, he, he developed RSI, a pretty of strain injury, so we can't play anymore, such a shame. Um, so we had to get another guy in, um, Simon Lee, and he's a very different drummer again, fantastic. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's probably a, a bit more... Um, it's a bit different, hearts and minds. I mean, lyrically, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of struggle, a lot of loss going on there. But musically, it sounds very positive. There's a lot more space, I think, feels like. And um, with um, with Benji now back in the in the band for Hearts and Minds, it, it feels like uh, there's a lot more colour that's, that's that's going on within the uh, within the songs. That preach you. Well. It's not changed an awful lot uh, for the five, six years that we've been doing this live. Um, it's always been Ben Nichols on double bass um, and always my brother Sean playing guitar, acoustic guitar. Um, but percussion wise it's changed. Cormac was there for a, a good two, three years. Cormac Byrne playing the boring and Cajon. Um, and also a drummer called Andy Tween was, was part of the setup. But now this uh, drummer has changed. Simon Lee is a fantastic player. Um, he's a bit like Bonham from um, Zeppelin. He's an amazing player. He's very, very heavy. But um, yeah, great driving force behind the sound. It works very well with Ben Nichols. The two of them have played together for a long time in other, in other groups, so um, they really know each other's playing, which helps an awful lot when it comes to bass and drums. Um, and uh, we added Benji Kirkpatrick. He said he was up for coming in to um, to explore some of the new songs I was writing last year. So I brought him in and with his voice and with his, and he's a fantastic multi-instrumentalist. So in that way, I, I think he's really helped. He's just really helped develop a lot of these songs and a lot of the sounds um, within Hearts and Minds. I mean, in terms of, transfer, of transferring it to live from, um, from the studio, really Hearts and Minds is basically a live record. We went in there um, into the studio that we recorded it in um, with a fantastic producer, a guy called Chad Blake, and uh, we were able to pretty much cut it in two weeks. And we'd only take three or four stabs at each song. Um, and if they weren't working, we'd literally just leave the song and start on another one. We had about 20 songs ready to go, so it was a good way of um, a good way of of working, I thought, because 
if if we couldn't do it, if we couldn't do it there and then, I, I think there was um, there was no point recording it or leave it for another time. Um, so it felt like it feels like a live record to me. It does more so than anything we've done before, because me and Sean. Who were, who were working on the records before, we were really concentrating a lot on the detail of production. And that is quite hard to replicate live, or sometimes impossible. So a lot of those songs on Freedom Fields um, and Kitty J, you know, we just can't really perform them live because we need 20 people. <laughs> it's one of those. Um, I mean, there's, there's such, a different, such a different process when you're recording to, um, to when you're playing live, you know. Uh, Obviously, you can you can experiment so much more when you're in a studio, um, and sometimes you can get a bit carried away. Obviously, technology now it's so easy to get carried away. Um, but you know, I, as much as possible with Hearts and Minds, I was just trying to get that live sound and get a band um, really that you could take away. What you see is what you get. You know? Shelter could take 